All right, Dan, we have some breaking news. In what was seemingly inevitable, Florida has made the move. They pulled the trigger and they fired Dan Mullen. Wow. Kind of hard to believe how quickly things went downhill in Gainesville, but right. this season, this season it came off the swivel despite the fact that they were very close earlier in the year against Alabama, despite the fact that it seemed as if things might be turning around, going in a positive direction. It fell apart very quickly, and they have decided to go in a different direction. Your thoughts on this move that became inevitable over the last few weeks and now is official. Everything Ed Orgeron touches <laughs> turns, I don't know. Man, it's it's surprising. This is year four, so this isn't Jimmy Lake, you know, almost getting two years. It Four years is not a crazy amount of time to give somebody, but the crazy thing to me is, and when you dig in, it's not as crazy. He exclusively made New Year's six games. He won the East just last year, and then a Peach Bowl. Last year was the Sugar Bowl and a, a very comfortable loss to uh, to Oklahoma. You know, Kyle Trask is only in there for a little bit, but and the Orange Bowl went over Virginia the prior year. It it underscores and sort of highlights and points arrows at the fact that inside, despite the fact that Florida had been successful relatively speaking to the rest of the sport, that things were beginning to rot a little in the program. We saw reporting that effort hasn't been there and recruiting has fallen off a cliff. And so from a certain perspective, if you're not recruiting, if the locker room is kind of gone and the effort clearly is waning on the field, and we saw what happened against Samford, we saw the the points explosion, especially on the ground against LSU and, and just you know South Carolina, the overtime loss to Mizzou. Like this is a team that is careening in the wrong direction. That there was little faith in the athletic department, in the administration, and I'm sure among boosters and influential types uh, around the program that he could get it turned around. And so they felt like this isn't going to happen. We're just going to waste time by continuing to employ Dan Mullen and further distance ourselves from uh, essentially Georgia at this point, right? Yeah, it, it's incredible. Less than 10 months ago, this is a team that was ranked in the top 10. Mm -hmm. And now the Florida job is open. I think it's one of the top coaching jobs that are available. That probably goes without saying. We did another video, which people can go and click and and learn more about um, where we talked about USC and where that job was in the pecking order and TCU and Washington and LSU. But Florida's up there. Florida's one yeah. of those jobs that for sure is going to be um, a showstopper. The issue that I see for Florida, there aren't any obvious candidates. You know, when Florida right. initially hired Dan Mullen, it seemed like he was a slam dunk given the space that he sort of occupied between where they were previously and Urban Meyer, right? To bring right. Dan Mullen in, it was sort of a throwback to what made Florida football great. Clearly, that did not work. And now of the names that I've heard, um, you know, Billy Napier is a name that people are really high on. I've seen Bob Stoops' his name. I don't know if he'd be willing to come out of retirement. He's been out of the game since yeah, 2017. So. Yeah. Lane Kiffin's another name. Lane Kiffin seems like he's got his job um, you know, well in hand at Ole Miss, but if he wants to move, there would definitely be some suitors. Luke Fickle, would he move his wife and six kids down to Gainesville? I don't yeah. know if that seems like an obvious thing to do. There are names being thrown about. Matt Campbell, is that a fit in Gainesville? I don't... These are all really big well, names that are... Dave Clawson, the Georgia coordinators, Todd Munkin and Dan Lanning, obviously. Georgia's defense under Dan Lanning, sure. who, is, who is young and up and coming, has been sensational. There's, there's a lot of names that are going to be associated with this job. Definitely. It just doesn't seem like any of them are quite as obvious as Mullen going back to Florida was four years ago. It's also, the timing is interesting because when you look at, well, first of all, the schools that have gone into Florida, not just in the SEC, but across the country for top players, there's a vacuum. 
And similar situation to what we saw with Tom Herman and schools going into Texas, LSU, Alabama, Oklahoma, and getting great players from Texas and that the Texas administration felt like this needed to change. And so right now within Florida, you have a Miami program who seems to be unsure about the direction they're heading. And there's rumors swirling about their head coach, Manny Diaz, though they've recruited pretty well, though maybe not as high as they could be. And Florida State certainly on the field has been disappointing as they're still in the middle of a pretty major rebuild. They seem to be turning the tide in terms of recruiting. But right now, there's an opportunity within Florida with, I mean, Georgia's in there and Alabama's in there. Everybody's in Florida recruiting. But Florida felt like they couldn't afford to be where they are within the college football landscape and geographically and allow for that kind of talent pillaging to occur because Florida at its best now we're going back over a decade which I don't think is the most relevant but even still there were Jim McElwain classes there were Will Muschamp classes that were particularly impressive on defense and those those 10 years were impressive developing the talent there uh, for the NFL and specifically defense and so there was just this feeling that We don't have an aggressive coaching staff in terms of amassing talent and building a roster to compete for the SEC. And they didn't see that turning around. And that has to be a major, major part of it because we're we're looking at the best of the SEC and the best of college football, looking at recruiting not just 2022 and saying, how are we going to finish out this class by mid-December, blah, blah, blah. It is, what does our 2024 binder look like? What are relationships like with high school coaches and those kids two, three years out? Because unless you have a coach at a major place in the SEC who is almost making himself sick by recruiting so much, then you're kind of doing it wrong. Whether or not that's a healthy thing is another conversation. But that's the competitive level right now in the conference. The crazy thing to me about this job, and especially how we got here Mm -hmm. under Dan Mullen, is a few short weeks ago when Mullen made that offhand comment about recruiting. Right. Mullen's made a lot of offhand comments. He's a quirky guy. And it was probably misinterpreted. And it was probably misinterpreted. Yeah. But I remember on the podcast, you and I joking around like, oh, boy, that's not a great thing to say. And we just kind of assumed in the moment that it would get washed away like everything else in college football. We got chaos going on all around us, right? Who's going to remember this six weeks from now? That comment definitely struck a nerve. And it wasn't until he made it that we saw just this groundswell of people talking about the recruiting. It may have been going on all the while behind the scenes. But yep. for whatever reason, that one comment stuck. Right. And it really rubbed a lot of Florida fans the long way. And it really rubbed Florida fans a lot. And it really rubbed Florida fans, a lot of them, the wrong way. And right. alas, here we are, Florida now looking for a new head football coach. One week left in the season. They've got a game to get bowl eligible a week from now, as we record yeah. this on a Sunday against Florida State. You got to like the Knowles chances there, given the yep. momentum that they have. And Florida now um, back to square one, trying to re- trying to rebuild this thing. Is, is it a job on the level of the best jobs in the conference to you? Now, they've had the success winning two national championships, what, 13, 15 years ago, whatever it is. Um, but I, I have seen the fact that, you know, they were the last to have an indoor facility, an indoor practice facility within the SEC, right? That the money hasn't always been the most active around the program and that... The fan expectations are, oh, yeah, compete for national championships year in and year out, when that's not necessarily what they're able to do as an operation in terms of how much money they put into the program, traveling, recruiting, spending on facilities and support staff, whatever. It's tricky. That's one of those tricky things where the expectation is to perform like a 10, but you're kind of an 8.8. And so I don't know. What what is it to you from the outside? Is it on the level of the best jobs in the sec i think it's right there okay i think it's right there um you know florida every time that job opens you hear a ton of big names that could potentially be interested we've got right. both brothers stoops at this point who could potentially be suitors for the gators i still think it's up there perhaps they need to do more to try and boost capabilities within the florida program but right. i find it hard to believe that this isn't included in that just elite company of top three jobs that are up there right now atop the list with usc and lsu it's just i hear you it's out there it's got to be one of the top jobs 
2018, both Scott Frost and Chip Kelly, I'm not going to say they were offered the job because nobody gets offered the job unless they know, unless the administrator knows it's going to be accepted. But there were conversations that Chip Kelly had or Chip Kelly's people had with Florida's people. Interest was gauged. Same goes for Scott Frost. They chose UCLA and Nebraska as better fits for themselves. And I don't know how telling that is to you, but it's it doesn't feel like it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer for the right fit, but I don't think the biggest names necessarily see themselves in Gainesville, if that makes any sense. Well, Just from what we, recent track record, it's just a very tough but high upside job to me. We will find out a whole lot more. I saw our good friend Bruce Feldman and Stuart Mandel put together a little clip of their own and yeah. in talking about Mark Stoops said, does he want to leave Kentucky where he can go nine and three and be a hero and go to a school <laughs> like Florida where he can go nine and three and get fired? That's just the world that yeah. Florida is living in. Whether rightly or wrongly, we will find out which direction they decide to go. But the coaching carousel here in the 2021 college football season spinning ever more chaotically than yeah. perhaps we ever thought possible. Seven FBS Big time openings at the Power 5 level at time of recording. Perhaps there will be more before season's end. Keep it right here. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more. We'll do our best to try and keep track of all this information as it comes in to the Solid Verbal headquarters. <clears throat> all right, I'll do breaking news. Here we go. Ready? Mm-hmm. In three, two. Florida has finally pulled the trigger. They have fired Don <laughs> <laughs> Try this one more time. 